Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how I do my Junji Ito Uzumaki makeup. This makeup is very detailed, but it actually only uses a couple of things. Most of the products I'm using today are from Mehron. I will talk about them as I get to them um, and explain how I do all of this makeup. I think it's really fun to do like the sketchy manga type of look like this. And this is such a fun like Halloween spooky scary look. Whether you're doing this for Halloween or cosplay, I hope this is really helpful for you. And with that, I guess we'll just get right into this makeup. So the first thing I will be using is this Mehron white liquid makeup that I got in the um, Resident Evil makeup kit and I'm going to use that just to do a base over my whole face as a brush in here so I'll just put some on and then use this brush to blend it all out and even it. And it's not super even, but it's just our first base coat because there's going to be a lot of drawing little details on here. So I like to sketch out where the details go before I even everything out. So then I can do the line work and then even out the white base after that. Now to start the line work, I have the same type of Mehron liquid makeup, but in black. In this little tiny, very thin brush, it's actually a paintbrush but I use it for makeup things when I'm doing little lines and stuff like that. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing things that like affects makeup and stuff, I don't use fancy brushes because I'm gonna ruin them and make them all gross anyways or sticky and I don't want to use like my nice makeup brushes for that. But here is the black. It's kind of inky looking and I'll just do that too do like the first initial sketching of everything. Now very, very, very basically, this will be the eyeball and this will be the spiral. So I start with the kind of tedious middle part in here doing the spiral and then working its way around and then I'll go into the details of the eyeball. Now the spiral, once you get the center, it's kind of going into the head so you want to make the lines kind of more spread out as they get farther onto this side and closer together as they get on this side. When I draw the circles, I don't necessarily try to make them perfectly even circles. I kind of think of like Tim Burton almost, where like when he draws stripes, they're not straight line, perfect stripes. They're kind of wiggly and sometimes they're thicker, sometimes they're thinner, and I think it adds more dimension to it. And with Junji Ito's style, it's a very like sketchy line work style, so I think it works very well for that too. Since this is also supposed to be deeper into the head, the further out we get on this side, the lines will be thicker because they're getting closer. 
It's kind of like a forced perspective of the line work. After around the halfway point, I'll switch from my thin paintbrush to this brush here. Um, this is actually kind of a nice brush. This one's from Sephora. Um, it's just an angled brush and it's a little bit thicker than the other one. So after I have the base of this spiral done, which you can already kind of tell, it's already starting to come together with like that first thing. It kind of takes forever. My camera has been recording for 15 minutes just on the spiral and I haven't even touched the rest of the face or really done the final details on that. But after I do the spiral, I will move on to the eyeball details. So obviously I have eyelids and I can't get rid of them. Um, if I didn't have as much of a, I think that's called a hooded lid or a double eyelid, I forget, but like where there's the crease, if I didn't have that crease, it might be easier to do the eyeball effect, but I do and I can't change my eyelid. <laughs> but basically this area from the top of my eyebrow until a little bit underneath my eye, that will be our eyeball. Um, the eyeball also because we're doing the forced perspective, we want it to be a little bit more kind of like this is the back of the eye, where this side will be the front of the eye. Um, I will go over with evening out the white in my eye a little bit um, with another layer of the liquid paint. And I also have a um, Mehron white cream blend. This is a mess because I've used it so much but it's a Mehron white cream makeup stick that will also go over that and even out the white before I put the black lines in. I'm gonna start with doing some of around the eye and work my way in toward the center for around the eye, it's mostly going to be darkening it and doing the sort of sketchy effects. And then as we work in, it will be the kind of squiggles of the eyeball veins and then the pupil in the center, which will actually be closer toward that side of my face than the actual center of my eyeball, because we want to be looking that way, like the panel <laughs> in the manga. For the veins and the eyes, I switched from my brushes in the Liquid Mehron makeup to some liquid eyeliner because it's just more precision, it has a even smaller brush tip, and I can do much more thinner, more detailed lines with that. To distract from the actual makeup tutorial for a second, now is a good time to see my curse of my eyelid because the makeup always does this. To stop it from doing that, I will use, kind of fix that, and then I will put this powder on. This is Mehron Color Set Powder, Translucent Setting Powder, um, and that will kind of dry it up so it'll stop creasing in my eyelid like that. Uh, and then we will do the pupil for that eye. Also, another thing just to note real quickly is I've noticed through using these makeups that the Mehron White Liquid Makeup has kind of a blue tinge to it where the cream makeup is more of a pure white. So I like to use this as the base and then go over it with the cream makeup because it 
takes out some of that blue tone and makes things like the eyeball really stand out. I know, very professional. I just see them using my finger to put the powder on. I find that using a powder brush around my eyes is really hard because I always end up putting powder into my actual eyeball. So if I'm using my finger, I can just dab it on the top like that and not have to deal with it going in my eye. And now for the pupil, we will be looking in this direction, over there kind of. Um, so like I have a pupil in my eye, but to make it more appear like it's a whole eyeball, I do some black around it in the direction that I want it to be looking in. So it makes the, it look like the whole pupil's out, not like my eyelid is covering the top part of it. So let's say there. And then, yes, it looks weird when I look the other way, but like closer to there. And even just like, if you zoom out, that can kind of work on its own. Uh, last time I did this makeup though, I ended up, oh, it looks so weird, <laughs> um, doing the people part a little bit taller. Uh, it also works if you close your eye, then it will look like the pupil is there and then you don't have to deal with the eyelid problem at all. This was also why I made it bigger was that when I open my eyes, the crease makes it flat on the top. So once I open my eye, I kind of match it up there and then I know how tall to make the eyeball part. I guess it's all the eyeball part, the pupil, that's what I'm trying to say. And then I will use some white to clean up the edges of that and make it more smooth. So that's kind of the most exciting part of this makeup, but to really complete it, then we move on to the other eye and the rest of the face. Now for this part, it's kind of hard to explain. I mostly just look at the picture and try to replicate it. Um, there's a part on her other eyelid that almost looks like a cut crease where it's kind of like black and very sketchy and then the end of her eyelid is white again. And then under it, it's kind of eye bags with sketchy lines through it. And then her eyebrow is very curled in like what's happening to me. <laughs> um, but because I don't want to be actually emoting with my eye real eyebrows because I would mess with the eyeball, I draw the fake eyebrow over here to just like give it that permanent expression. getting so close already. 
Okay, I'm going to do some details around the rest of the face, and then we'll go finish the final touches on the spiral. And it'll be pretty much done. It's honestly, adding some lipstick, you could just stop here if you wanted to, because this, you can tell what it is, but I like to go a little bit extra when I do these things. My kind of extraness that I'm gonna do is um, making it more like sketchy in appearance. Um, I will even out the white on my neck and on my cheeks and stuff. And then I'm gonna go in with the black. She has some shading under her neck here in the, the cheeks, side, side, side burns, that's not right. The cheeks, cheekbones, that's what I'm trying to say. And a little bit around the nose. So just creating some shadows is basically what we're doing now. For the nose, you basically just go around your nostrils and like around the sides in some black, but like just barely because you don't want it to look like an animal nose, like a little snout, um, but we want it to look like someone drew the end of the nose in it. So it doesn't disappear on the face basically because when it's all white, it's just like, I have no nose. <laughs> the cheeks is pretty easy. I just go with this and I do a couple lines on like the parts of my cheekbone and it's again making it so that just doesn't disappear on your face. Making dimensions and my wig mostly covers a lot of this area anyways but still if the hair moves so I'm not just a flat flat piece of paper. And then for the neck, I will outline the jawline and I connect it up to those cheekbone parts and then make the kind of V-shaped shadow down here and then the sketchy lines. And then the final step I'm gonna do is just cleaning up around the spiral. I like to go in with the eyeliner to make some of the lines more precise. And then there's some more kind of sketchiness around the outside of it that separates it from the rest of the face.
The last part of this makeup is the lipstick. <laughs> the last part of this makeup is the lipstick. I try to do it kind of a roundish lip. Roundish, smallish lip, because that's what she has. And that's it. Uh, this was the Sephora Collection Black Lipstick. Now, the final step, putting on the wig. And the nice thing about this costume, especially if you're doing it for like Halloween or something, is that, at least when I've worn it, I've just worn an all black outfit. I don't really do much with the clothes because most of the attention and focus should be on the face and the makeup and all that. So I just wore a plain black shirt and a black wig and I'll show you how I do that. So this black wig here is just from Amazon. It's just a little black bob with straight across bangs. And throw that on. Now, of course, having it like this is like, what was the point of all that? You can't see it, but I pull it up and just take some bobby pins and take as much of it as you can to just the edge of the circle and pin it. And then this side. Pin again to like the hairline. And there we go. And then it's just a black shirt. And that is how I did my Junji Ito Uzumaki makeup, cosplay makeup, costume makeup. Um, I don't have anything on my hands, but an easy fix would be just wearing some gloves, or if you want to go all out and paint your hands, go ahead and do that. I didn't because I want to be able to use my hands right now. Um, I hope this was helpful for any of you guys who were wanting to do this either as a cosplay or as a Halloween costume or anything like that. It's crazy how, like, especially when I back up like this, like, it looks like my camera is recording in black and white right now. But then, like, bam, colors. <laughs> Or when I open my mouth, because I my tongue. But this was a lot of fun. I did this makeup first kind of as a whim for Rock and Chalk this year, and I loved how it came out so much, and it was really fun to spend all the time on those spirals, and I love doing this. I think maybe doing some more Junji Ito makeups in the future would be really fun. I just need to figure out which character I'm going to do next. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know, though, or ones that you want to see me do or even just other anime manga characters that you'd like to see me do makeup of, please let me know, because this is fun and I love to do it. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys have a good day and a super happy Halloween. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.